I mentioned the heat shields. They are iconic. Starship is wrapped in a heat shield, which is composed of 18,000 hexagonal ceramic tiles designed to insulate the vehicle during that atmospheric entry. And that's really important because <laughs> the temperatures can be as high as 2,600 degrees Fahrenheit. The hex-shaped tiles, like the ones that Shiva and I have, uh, roughly make up about two-thirds of the vehicle. We can see that we have some different shapes. Mine is slightly curved. As you can imagine, it sits on the curved portions of the Starship vehicle. Now, the one that I've got is a, is a hexagonal tile that's more flat, um, and it's really used for the flatter structures on the vehicle. And we need a heat shield because when you're coming back in from re hey everybody, how are we doing? We're supersonic, <laughs> we're compressing all the air ahead of us. Good morning, YouTube. And causing a lot of heating along the surface, and without a heat shield, good that morning, would go good straight morning. into the structure. Yeah, one thing that's amazing to me, especially when I first picked up one of these heat shield tiles, is that they're so light. Good um, morning. They almost feel like they're made out of foam they're checking they're into the light, stream they, good morning they sound like it too um and one thing that we do want to mention t minus uh, 21 in minutes order to reject the maximum amount of heat during that entry uh like shiva was just saying they're black and that's because black helps uh reject that heat good, good morning that's building up on the good morning good morning what up christine trail. Now, Starship is designed for vertical takeoff and landing as opposed to taking off and landing like an airplane. And that's because that, that's really important because we don't have runway. How are we doing? Hello, Australia. Happy 420. The gravity is not as high Happy as Happy 420. On How are we Earth, doing, you guys? Just one third of what it is here on Earth and on the moon is just a sixth. So in both of those cases, Starship with just its engines can take off without needing the super heavy booster like we do need here on planet Earth. Now for today's All test, right. Starship does not have its landing legs attached because like we said before, it won't be returning anywhere. Uh, Starship is expected to make a very hard ocean landing, which if we even make it that far <laughs> and manage to get any views, uh, it will certainly make for a very exciting end to today's test. At this point in time, we are uh, 20 minutes uh, or just over 20 minutes from liftoff. Let's check in with John Innsbrucker for a status update. Hey, John. 20 minutes. You. Thanks, Kate. I'm John Innsbrucker, Principal Integration Engineer here at SpaceX. We're currently loading propellant from the ground system into both the first and second stages. Now, both vehicles use the same two propellants. That commonality helps build the reliability. And the fuel today is Get liquid a methane. And that's at a temperature, temperature of just over 100. Which is awesome. That's a very different scale of rocket compared yes. to Starship. Yeah. I mean, we're that thing. like completely different. Um, so, uh, but the, it was fun seeing experience the, the, the scale as it's foggy as hell out there. The high bay and the mega bay. And you look and it takes your brain almost like when you see like a cathedral or some large space. Sometimes your brain has to like reevaluate and adjust. To hey, good morning, Christine. Um, they, I watch them all do that in real time. Of like, wait, and they're seeing someone on a, on a lift going, oh, oh humans oh, for scale. Yeah, humans for yeah. scale, exactly. And it was it was really really fun seeing that, um, and just kind of watching them all experience something like that. Good morning, Don. Um, but also when you get out to the pad, ironically. Good morning, Deborah. Where, you know everything. When you're at the pad, it's so empty. You know, you're in such a desolate area. The pad is very clean. Good morning. Concrete, you know, and there's nothing much. Happy there. 420, everybody. So even when we're standing. 420 friendly news right here. Next to the rocket, basically. That you still don't actually. That, it feels smaller out on the pad. 19 minutes. Power feels smaller than when you're standing next to the high bay and the mega bay looking oh, in. Oh, how interesting. And I think it's just because there is nothing else. So we're going to go back and forth. Running from liftoff. The weather and winds are looking good. We have been watching the ground level winds. They're at 18 miles an hour. As the morning continues, they will increase, but that is below our limits right now. We're also looking at upper altitude winds. We're waiting for one more balloon, but we believe that we're going to be go. On the launch vehicle itself, the teams, the good news, they're not working any issues right now. But if for some reason we do not make our test flight today, if we have to hold, we have a backup launch window. However, we're not sure when it would be. It could be 24 or 48 hours after today. Interesting. It will depend on how far we get into the countdown. But right now, heading for a T0 at 828 Central, 1328 Universal Time. Kate, everything is looking good. Awesome news. 
Now, in order to make life multiplanetary, we need a fully reusable vehicle that's capable of carrying a huge amount of cargo and a lot of people to orbit and have a pretty quick turnaround. Going the to space. Is to effectively reuse launch vehicles just like airplanes. Yeah, imagine if you had to wait for a new airplane to be constructed every time you wanted to fly. You'd rarely go anywhere, and for most of us, it would be completely unaffordable. In order for us to get to Mars and back with lots of people, lots of cargo, multiple times, reusability really is a must. In advance of our first <laughs> missions to Mars, Starship wow. will execute a number of missions with both cargo and people, starting with Earth orbit and eventually expanding to the moon and beyond. The now, moon will be the moon will be wild. To home, Starship will also be critical to other programs. Once fully operated, hey, I'm just saying we better get we better have a. Uh, Starlink satellites high definition 4k images of the moon the whole thing we want a Netflix documentary we need Netflix to the moon so we can see it such an exciting a future ahead of us but first uh, let's talk a little about how we got to where we are today now Starship's testing ramped up in July of 2019 with our Starhopper prototype, sort of a short version of the Starship that we see today. There's a great photo of it. It was just over 18 meters tall. It had a single Raptor engine and we had it to test fly and perform low level altitude maneuvers and attempt landing. The initial test flight or hop reached about 20 meters in altitude. That was followed by the one that you've got on your screen here. This was our 150 meter altitude hop. We uh, went up, took a little jaunt away, about 100 meters or so away from the launch pad. I, was, I remember Used watching that. Engine to fly and actually land. And actually, this uh, hopper is actually down at Starbase now. Yeah, I love this shot. It's just so fun to see it fly. <laughs> <laughs> After a series of 150 meter hop tests with earlier prototypes, the Starship program saw a major breakthrough during a test flight of the vehicle known as Serial Number 8. Uh, or SN8, you can see it there on your screen now. In December 2020, SN8 demonstrated a first of its kind controlled aerodynamic descent and landing flip maneuver. Check into the stream, everybody. Belly flop. <laughs> The SN8 15 minutes rose to an altitude of 12.5 kilometers or 7.8 miles and conducted a belly flop maneuver, which you see there uh, uh, during its descent. While it didn't stick the landing, the test was a major milestone in the development of Starship. In fact, we should be able to see that uh, unfortunately failed landing. Boom. <laughs> F. It was fun to watch, though. <laughs> Rapid, unscheduled disassembly, but learned a lot of data. Now, the testing continued on to prototype serial number nine. It took a 10 kilometer flight. It's about 6.2 miles up in February of 2021. We had a nominal ascent. We executed- What up, Australia? Once we got to the top How of the altitude doing? window. We did that belly flop maneuver, which is so much more fun to say than controlled descent, <laughs> uh, aerodynamic maneuver. That was all stable, but unfortunately, we had a dramatic end on this flight as well. Oh, I'm glad you we beat had it. A failure on one of the engines that resulted in another pretty large fireball. But what was really cool about both of those flights was how much we learned Oof. just between serial numbers eight and nine, and how quickly we were able to achieve our primary objectives. Big in explosions. Flights. In addition to that, we. <clears throat> We got so much data that demonstrated control. We need a fresh safety meeting, you guys. It's a 420 friendly newscast today on 420. Nine Starship high altitude test flights in total. And then 420 friendly. The there. In May of 2021, SN15 launched from Starbase, reached an altitude of about 10 kilometers, performed a number of Hello, Hibbing, Minnesota. Safely returned to the launch site. <laughs> this was the first Starship prototype to fly, control its descent, safely land, and be recovered in one piece. And people Ooh. were cheering like crazy I was after one that of them. test flight. <laughs> T-minus 13 minutes. Those successes in our suborbital campaign, one of the next big challenges is for the upper stage when it comes to reusability. Florida's tuned in. That's right, Xander, safety meeting. Phase of entry. 420. Combined with the later ability to refill Starship's tank with propellants, <clears throat> the fuel and oxygen while we're on orbit, that will enable us to have a fully reusable transportation system that's designed to carry both crew and cargo on long duration missions, interplanetary flights, and will help humanity 
get to the moon, travel to Mars and beyond in our solar system. This is all uh, just basically our path of progress, uh, basically an iteration on each vehicle. And that iterative process is a core part of how we work here at SpaceX. Uh, we like to test early and often, uh, public, publicly as well in our <laughs> case. Um, and that's both for hardware and software. And while it doesn't always go as expected, we learn so much from it and it informs our next attempt. Yeah, we learn a lot from actually putting the vehicle through. Let's go. Like tests. Uh, even the test on Monday gave us an opportunity to learn more about the vehicle into today's launch attempt. And so far, things are looking really good. Now, we are continuing into our countdown. We're about T minus 12 minutes to go. I think it's a perfect time for another check in. With, I think it's a perfect uh, time for a safety uh, meeting. Well, sure. The good news is that uh, the nets are quiet. The teams are currently working. No significant launch vehicle issues. Hey, coffee fun contributions. Happy 420. Thank you, Katie. And counting. Propellant loading is continuing on both the Super Heavy and the ship stages. You can see the graphic on the left hand side of the screen. Most recently, thank you so much, Katie. Liquid oxygen and liquid methane fuel into the header tanks on Starship. Those are two small tanks just underneath the nose of the second stage. Now that started at T minus 27. Good morning. Minutes. Good morning. That'll be wrapping up at about T minus T minus. Yeah, that will be wrapping up about T minus nine minutes. The guy broken. Now the Starship. T minus T minus. And locks tanks. Are He's an autopilot right now. The super heavy first stage booster propellant load Look at that is thing. continuing. And that'll go till about T minus three minutes. We're underway with engine chill as we get ready for T zero. And we're also configuring the launch pad for liftoff. The booster hold downs have been unlatched. Have you guys seen the reel of Elon telling Ro Rogan and uh, telling Rogan that they made the the rocket pointy because of the dictator, the movie? He saw the movie The Dictator and he said he wants the rocket pointy, and that's why they made it pointy, like it, like you see it. The SpaceX team continues to check in with the Coast Guard. <clears throat> Good news is we've not heard any reports of boats in the safety perimeter as the launch vehicle heads out over the Gulf of Mexico. So right now, T minus 10 minutes, 40 seconds and counting. Everything continues to go well for an on-time launch. Let's go. Uh, a little over T minus 10 minutes. T minus 10 minutes. The test site has gone through a huge amount of development over the last couple of years. One thing I want to point out, this is a great view from our- Good John morning, Island. Richard, from John's Island, South Carolina. In the fog, kind of in the distance, in the background and to the left of the pad, you can actually see our production facility, uh, which is the other part of Starbase. I'm preparing my safety. Course, as part of we have to be safe this morning on 420. Made it just in time. I put out extra notifications. Oh, did we tweet this out? The Starbase team produced four Starship Super Heavy boosters oh, and five Starships, along with their 200th Raptor 2 engine. And they're only scaling up from there, Kate. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible to think that for 2023, uh, production has five boosters and eight Starships going. So um, it's incredible and it's important to have that system fill uh in basically the manufacturing good morning jessica good morning everyone go as soon as we're done uh with this test <laughs> yeah exactly and ultimately i mean we talked about how starship is an order of magnitude more propellant uh, excuse me payload to orbit but if you're gonna go set up a base on the moon or Mars, you're gonna need thousands of metric tons of propellants. And so you're gonna need a fleet of vehicles that's capable what of- What a 420 day, we're watching a rocket yeah, take off to outer space. Starbase directly employs more than 1800 employees. Uh, it's the largest employer in the area, in fact. Um, and we're very thankful to Cameron County for being so supportive. Uh, this is a view from the uh, Cameron County Amphitheater um, and it, there's a crowd there, uh, and I can, you could tell by the energy here in Hawthorne the energy. Well, that everyone's getting really exciting. I feel my own heart rate going <laughs> up and up. <laughs> I know. It, it must be really, really exciting to go see this. And I mean, just the sheer amount of power on Starship, you're going to feel it down there uh, when this thing lifts off from the pad. We've actually got a great shot here of, of the natural surroundings around the pad. Uh, lift off enough, while we lift of off. Pads end up being around sort of uh, wild locations like this um wild locations like this but 
Coming up on T minus eight minutes, I think it's another good time for check-in with John. Another good time for a safety meeting. Perfect time. Thank you, Shiva. T minus just over eight minutes to the first test flight of Starship. Currently, we are pressurizing second stage. We are also closing out liquid oxygen and fuel header loads on the second stage. We're also getting ready for propellant Ship load is closed tank up. pressurization on the first stage. <laughs> In fact, uh, we are just now closing out header tank load on the second stage. Good morning. Now with the header tanks loaded and closed out, that means we're down to just the first stage to finish loading. That'll finish about T minus three minutes. And at that point, when both stages are loaded, we will have the 10 million pounds of liquid propellant on board. Now in the next few minutes, the guidance system will begin its final alignment for flight during a quiet period when the rocket's not doing anything. The automated flight termination system will be armed and a final TVC checkout will be performed. Those are the engine wiggles and hopefully we'll be able to see that with the cameras underneath the vehicle and maybe even the second stage engines. And there's a view looking underneath the super heavy first stage with the 33 Raptor engines. Now, a reminder as we continue counting down, if we do need to hold, the point where we hold the clock would be a T minus 40 seconds. We can pause there. Oh, shit. Typically in the past, if we need a little bit more time to finish final checkouts or do some pressurization of the onboard storage tanks, that's where we would hold. But currently, we're not hearing a need to hold. So hey, Nate, thank you so much for becoming a subscriber. Seconds, everything looks good. And of course, Kate Sheva, as we get close, we're gonna get into the engine ignition sequence of 33 Raptors, and that's gonna be something new for everybody. <laughs> I cannot wait for that moment. So for those of you that are familiar with how we launch Falcon 9 rockets, you probably know that we light all nine of those first stage Merlin 1D engines all at once. It's pretty different than what we do, or what we're attempting to do today. We're actually going to be igniting what up, you have again? three engines in banks uh, or clusters, and that sequence starts at T- Coffee fun, seconds. thank you so much. Yeah, and the ignition sequence is a little bit different, uh, both in terms of the timing and also the ignition method. So on Falcon 9, we use a chemical called T-Tab. It's, it's a pyrophoric material, so that means when you mix the two together, it, it produces a flame that kicks off that green characteristic spark on Falcon 9 missions. But actually on Starship, we use electrical ignition systems. Many of those are integrated on the ground system here. And the electrical ignition, uh, we start lighting the banks at T minus six seconds. And then over the next four seconds, almost going to be five minutes will ignite and eventually bring uh, the booster up to a thrust to weight greater than one and hopefully ascent. <laughs> Super exciting. Uh, like we said, pretty different from our Falcon 9 launches. And so this will be the first time that any of us have gotten to see this type of an, uh, of uh, integrated test. Five minutes. The and the Super Heavy Booster. If we lift off and clear the pad, we're calling that a win. <laughs> <laughs> a great shot of the pad there. A uh, great shot of the quick disconnect on the second stage. You can see the frost line on the booster where that methane is, Thank you, uh, CJ. is fully topped up. Uh, I think we're just coming up on the last few minutes here of, of propellant fill on the booster. And that quick disconnect is going to separate away as we actually get into the ignition se sequence, but it's providing electrical connections now and uh, also providing the propellants that we're loading into the, the vehicle. Yeah, uh, we're just now under four minutes until liftoff <laughs> of the Starship flight test. Um, we've been following along for what honestly seems like days and days now, but really it 
kind of comes down to years. <laughs> it, yeah. it has been a long time to get to where we are today. Uh, now, fast forwarding a little bit, um, we have the opportunity to hold, if necessary, at 40 seconds. Um, and we are able to hold there for about 15 minutes um, or up to 15 minutes uh, and still be able to lift off. Yeah, and that's a little bit different from Falcon uh, for the propellant sequence on Falcon. All right, that, um, pole coming in. We don't have the opportunity to hold, so that's a cool new capability. What's the outcome? <coughs> right now, T minus three minutes, 10 seconds in Three counter. minutes and 10 seconds. Three minutes and 10 seconds for this space launch. Is it gonna be a total success? Failure to launch. Is it gonna blow up on the pad or is it gonna blow up in the air? <coughs> Be wrapping up here shortly. In fact, it looks like uh, fuel fill and drain valves are coming closed. That means first stage is fully loaded, second stage fully loaded, and at 10 million pounds of propellant on board the Starship launch vehicle. I want to take a quick moment to say that the crowd energy here is electric. I feel like it's Falcon Heavy test demo all over again. <laughs> <laughs> And hopefully you'll hear us as we get into the plus count. But right now, <laughs> next activity is coming up. The flight termination system arms at T minus two minutes. Thrust vector. T minus two, two minutes. Oh, Z with five gifted that, memberships coming in. T minus Thank you, Jim. There's a view looking up at the 33 Raptor engines. There are 20 engines in a circle on the outside. And as Shiva said earlier, 13 engines on the center. Those are the ones that gimbal. Two minutes. I don't think I've ever seen someone so excited for TVC Wiggles. <laughs> Love this view. These are the 33 Raptor engines at the A minute base. 30. Super heavy booster. <clears throat> I think we can see those wiggles now. We're currently inside 90 seconds. Next major activity, T minus 40 seconds. That is a gate, a decision point. We're waiting, possibility the propulsion team may need a few minutes. Flight termination system is armed for flight. We're getting ready for T minus one minute and counting. One minute. <laughs> Next, we'll see as we get past T-minus 40 seconds for final checks of the vehicle. Final checks. Back to 40 seconds. <clears throat> It's gotta, it's gotta pass the tests. Okay, you can see the clock has recycled. Flight director has called a hold. We are recycling. Oof. For the moment, we'll see where they move the clock back to. They could hold at T minus 40 seconds. They could go to an earlier point. Give us a minute to listen into the nets and we'll see if we can get you more information to share. Don't they have the, do they have the flight radio? <laughs> XX. Um. No, everyone's waiting for the same thing. We're all watching the same thing. Oh. Is it gonna launch? Outcome so far in our poll, 64% say total success, 14% failure to launch, seven blows up on the pad, 14% it blows up in the air. <clears throat> Countdown hold for final launch, checkouts. There's no personnel, no. Not on this one. 
These are test flights. There will eventually be. <laughs> no one's on board. These are, this is a test flight. No, no, no humans on this one. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. As we're all waiting to see if this thing's gonna launch today. Oh, we gotta probably go to Elon Musk's app now. Damn, dude. Gotta, gotta actually look and see what he says today. It's actually relevant. The one day. I just tweeted six minutes ago, T0 in four minutes. <clears throat> the one hour launch window starts now. So we have a window now where we can just get- Burker again here at the Hawthorne webcast desk. We're holding a T minus 40 seconds. What we've heard so far is we have a couple of issues we're working. One is the booster tank pressurization. Uh, final pressurization was just a little bit uh, long. That's not unusual. We've held at T minus 40 seconds before to pressurize. That appears to have been resolved. At the same time on the second stage, they're working some final purging. Uh, we should know very shortly if that is cleared and if we'll continue the countdown. Everyone, especially that person, is excited <laughs> to keep going. <laughs> like John said, we should know shortly um, if we are able to continue. Uh, but as we mentioned before, we are able to hold uh, up to 15 minutes and still be able to lift off today. Yeah, on Falcon 9, it's a Damn. little bit Damn, thank you, Merck, for Once doing amazing work. Loading, we pretty much have to go at the targeted... I'm excited to share this with you guys. Hopefully it launches. Hope you reach all your goals. Thank you so much. And then also Coffee Fun from Jim. Thank you again. Five gifteds from Ozzy. Yeah. It looks like they're clearing all the flags, and we're going to release at T minus 40 seconds. Oh, shit. That is amazing news. Amazing. <laughs> Let's go. Team working quickly through their issues on first and second stages. So they'll start at 40 seconds I'm when sure they're ready. All of the rehearsals uh, and simulations that they've been doing have prepared them to evaluate this data quickly to try to get us in for today's launch attempt. <clears throat> For those of you just joining, we have a brief hold um, at the T minus 40 second mark. Uh, the team is resolving one issue with the bleed purge on the stage two Raptors. Um, like John just said, the teams are quickly working that and it looks like the flags are being cleared as we speak. So we should be able to resume the launch countdown any moment now. And it's worth noting on Starship that once we resume the countdown, it restarts from the 40 second period and then we keep exactly. going unless another condition pops up. So stick around because <laughs> uh, Starship could be going here real soon. <laughs> Any moment. Don't walk away, that's for sure. <laughs> You'll have Amazing 40 seconds when it starts. From Starbase, Texas. Uh, There we go, 30 seconds. Fucking went. Down and throttled back up. <clears throat> Going 
through the period of maximum aerodynamic pressure. Damn. So velocity increases. The depth of the atmosphere is decreasing. Max Q. Lessening stress on the vehicle. The call out. Max Q now. <laughs> Continuing to watch the first stage as we head down range. Six engines are out. 100 <laughs> seconds into flight. 100 seconds into the plate. Our next major activity is going to be set down of the first stage. Houston tracking station now acquiring the vehicle. With shut down, we will get separation of Starship and Super Heavy and ignition of the Starship engines. When Starship separates, we light up six engines in a staggered sequence. If all goes well, those six engines will burn for almost six and a half minutes. Onboard view from Starship. Wow. Views of the Raptor engines on the second stage as we prepare for stage separation. Now, after stage separation, the first stage will flip and begin a boost back maneuver for landing in the Gulf. A few of the engines are out so far. It looked like six of them or so were out, but. To fly. Two minutes, 40 seconds. Let's get ready for main engine cutoff. Remember, this is a test flight. This is, they aren't going to actually, they're not. There's nobody on board yet. For stage separation. Wow, look at that spin. Is it gonna, it's got to stay intact while it's doing its thing right now. How the f As of right now, we are awaiting stage separation. Where Starship should separate from the super heavy booster. Waiting for the separation. Yeah, Kate, right now it looks like we saw the start of the flip, but obviously we're seeing from the ground cameras the entire Starship stack continuing to rotate. We should have had separation by now. Mm -hmm. Obviously, this is uh, does not appear to be a nominal situation. Seems yeah, to be the it does issue. Seem to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. Ah, uh, damn. It blew up. Uh, and, there, <laughs> and there, as you saw, as we promised, it blew up in the air. To the Starship inaugural integrated test flight. Damn. Rip. <laughs> That was, they made it far. The booster and the Starship vehicle. Hey, they made it pretty damn far. Elon's not happy, obviously. He's salty as hell. Look at him. But he won't be happy, though. He wanted that to be successful. He's not said before, Elon. We wanted to make it all the way through, but to get this far, <laughs> put a, honestly. Put a camera on him immediately. Where's Joe Rogan? They should have had Joe Rogan there. <laughs> like, a, like a post fight. What we call a rapid unscheduled disassembly or a rud during ascent. But now this was a development test. This is the first test flight of Starship. You can't be too upset. The thing damn near made it. If the thing disconnected, it would have been a better of a flight test. So you never it was cool. We saw it blow up. Who guessed it correct? Promise, excitement is guaranteed. And Starship Thanks for the excitement, Starship or uh, SpaceX. 16% of you guys said blew up in the air. You 16% got it correct. Dang. That was pretty damn exciting. That's pretty damn exciting. Total success. Uh, 62%. You guys are hope, hopium. Lots of hopium in chat. Lots of hopium. I put blue up in the air. And those surrounding areas were cleared in advance of the test. And of course, that was pretty, that was pretty cool. I mean, they're going to, there's going to be more. We're going to have more space flights. 420. 
Happy 420, everyone. Well, that's that. <laughs> that is that. Let's see, did he tweet anything? I mean, he was there. We just saw him sitting in his spot. I don't know, he hasn't tweeted anything yet. Damn. Damn, so really quick, let's go back to it if you missed it. Let's go back to the moment. Just really quick replay. Replay of the moment. <laughs> But he re rewind obviously because we watched it live and reacted to it when it happened so that was exciting but here it was it was doing its spin and apparently when it does its spin thing the capsule obviously has to detach because the people will be in that uh, someday right this is a flight test so it got real quiet and they were like damn it should have already separated by now right because you got all the people that worked on it in the room as of right now we this is uh, does not appear to be a nominal situation. And he said that obviously that's the and it was a, a sealed deal. It wasn't going to happen. Does appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. And it blew up. <laughs> so that's what happened. It took off. The takeoff was pretty damn cool. Where was the takeoff part? We can go back and look at that really quick again. There it was. It was pretty sweet. Not gonna lie. So another thing to pay attention to for future tests is going to be this uh, ring down here. You guys see this logo or this icon down here that shows you how many of the engines are go out. Like, you know, what I mean, when the thing flies, you can kind of see it in the image right here. But when these lights go down, those are the engines going out. Tracking station now acquiring the vehicle. With shutdown, we will get separation of Starship and Super Heavy and ignition of the Starship engines. And when Starship separates, we light up six engines in a staggered sequence. And if all goes well, those six engines will burn for almost six and a half minutes. Onboard view from Starship. Stage. regardless it was cool seeing this thing get into like space at least like it got damn near it it got pretty far for being its very first flight test like the thing could have blown up on the on the launch pad too like it couldn't have even started you know what i mean a comment in the chat said that the soviet uh first venture to the moon we get this is very this is uh further than that got significantly as we prepare for stage listen seven. we're not really competing Ru listen russia's Russia's gonna f crumble, okay? Their country isn't gonna be a country much, much longer. They're gonna get divvied out into the republics, okay? 
Russia is done in terms of uh, competing towards something greater like this. <laughs> now, after stage separation, the first stage will flip and begin a boost back maneuver for landing in the Gulf. They started getting quiet when I think the space capsule should have detached by now. To fly. Two minutes, 40 seconds. Let's get ready for main engine cutoff. This is when they started getting worried about the capsule not detaching. Flip for stage separation. So we got to see detachment in the, by that first turn, it, it sounds like, based upon their reaction. Like, they were expecting it to detach on that first one, and it didn't happen, so... Alright. They're hoping for it now every time, but that first one is when they were expecting it to. Happy 420, squad. Thank you, Jeff. Happy 420. As of right now, we are awaiting stage separation. Damn, it's going to be years before the next How long Starship until the next one? Separate from the super heavy booster. Yeah, Kate, right now it looks like we saw the start of the flight. That'd be a long time before the next one, huh? From the ground cameras, the entire Starship stack continuing to rotate. We should have had separation by now. Obviously, this is uh, does not appear to be a nominal situation. Yeah, it I kept does spinning. appear to be spinning, but I do want to remind everyone that everything after clearing the tower was icing on the cake. And it blew up. Uh, there. <laughs> and there, as you saw, as we promised, an exciting end to the Starship inaugural. It made it pretty far, you guys. It made it like it, I think it. I think it surpassed all expectations. I don't think there's a single person that could sit here and be like, damn. You know what I mean? I thought it, I didn't think it was going to make it that far. I think got into at least the the initial orbit, you know what I mean? Before you actually get out there and did its thing. It, only, it just didn't separate. And then I'm sure maybe when it, if it, they do get it to separate, there might be further problems. Uh, Elon here is his initial reaction. Obviously, that's the face of I'm not happy. But, I mean, he would like to be a success on that, obviously, but... It's, I mean, all in all, I think it did better than what everyone expected. We'll be covering the next one, you guys, that's for sure. The next space launch, there it was. Thank you guys again for tuning in. What a way to start our 420. If you guys want more from me today, give me a little time. We were up late last night. I can't start the day yet, okay? I know, I know our morning audience. I love you guys. You guys are awesome, but I need a little bit of time. I need to get some coffee, some breakfast, but I'm live today. We're live. I'm going to be playing a EA Sports PGA Tour today. I'm sorry, my snack squad. Dead Island doesn't come out until 11 p.m. <clears throat> so we'll be playing that game tonight. All right. But come and hang out. 420 day. And then also for Mercado Media viewers, I'm going to probably be cutting this for snack squad at about uh, 3 o'clock. So we'll be playing for a few hours. And then I plan to go to the Capitol today and checking out the 420 events uh, and give you guys some updates on the legalization process going on here in Minnesota. We got some events going on at our state capitol, so I might take you guys there at least for maybe for an hour or so, just see what they got going on there. So expect another stream for Mercado Media here on 420 in real life stream, IRL. All right. Thank you guys again so much for tuning in, Snack Squad. I hope to see you guys in a few hours on on that Mercado Media. Uh, and also, no matter what. I'll see you guys tonight for my uh, Ukraine war coverage. We cover the war in Ukraine right here on Mercado Media at 7 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, 420 Friendly News. Hope to see you guys again tonight. You can go and check out our coverage if you missed it, or if you want to see what that's about. Hope to see you then. Have a good night, you guys. We'll cover the next flight test whenever that is, if it's this fall or in a couple months, whenever they get the next uh, whatever they got to do. We'll, we'll pay attention, all right, and we'll we'll cover it. Thank you guys again.